Ja, herzlich willkommen auf meiner Seite zur äh, dritten Ausgabe unserer Show. Heute wird es vor allem um Musik gehen. On today's show, a special event that has to do with my life and is dedicated to Fela Kuti in celebration of Fela Kuti and also in celebration of my life and guest on this show. We used music to eliminate fear when crossing the Mediterranean. Music played a role in bolstering us, making us not give up. It gave us life until we saw rescue. So today you will be privileged to meet members of the surviving members of that boat tree. Genau, ähm, ich werde gleich äh, einige der Mitglieder, die auf dem Boot zusammen mit Derry waren, interviewen. Ähm, und es wird darum gehen, äh, um die Musik oder um das Singen, das auf diesem Boot stattfand und wie sie die Überfahrt ähm, erlebt haben. I'm a Yoruba man from West Africa, from the Yoruba Nation. And in my tribe, Alejo means stranger. And the phenomenon of strangers in your society we also have that phenomenon in our society. So today you, you will be meeting Sunday Akin Rotoye, a musician, a poet of Juju extraction from West Africa, from the Yoruba people, who is going to perform a theatrical musical called Alejo. Thank you very much for coming and enjoy the show. Barao, why your mommy don't like bed? And now, Benamo, 
Kaluku ti nbe ni le baba mi otokunu agba. Omo ni le gberere o. Se ba wa lomo ni le gbaragada. Ma lo ja wereke, ma lo ja wereke. Kaluku ti nbe ni le baba mi otokunu agba. Well, that was Alejo, Sunday Akinrotoye. Sunday, can you come up stage, please? Thank you, uh, Sunday, for your performance and uh, for your friends as well. So you were the one who was on the boat, for example, with Larry and more than 200 other people coming from Libya to Lampedusa. Um, and on this boat trip that was in May 2011, um, you were the one starting starting singing on this boat. Yeah. Um, why did you decide to do that, and why did you have the impression that it will help you? Yeah, thank you very much. The the whole issue started from where we started, all the way from Libya. I 
actually we boarded at night and uh, we were about 250 passengers in the boat, both the adult and the children. So at the middle of the, of the journey, my see, we met a very bad weather, which all hope was lost. So I didn't know what came upon me. I got the inspiration and I just stood up in the midst of uh, about 250 people. I started singing, me alone. And uh, everybody was like, is it the next thing that this guy could just doing the midst of, you know, panicking people were looking for way out. I started singing, singing. I sang for a couple of six or seven hours. So, and the more I sing, the more I gain a lot of people beside me. So they were following me singing and the, the tension was coming down. So, and even the storm, as heavy as it is, as we continue singing, and the tension of the of the wind started coming down before we now call the rescue. About that, it's about maybe eight to nine hours of that. We lost all our location if we did nothing to, to show off, but we just believe that there is something that could happen. Actually, before then, I wrote a poem when I was secondary school, and that thing popped up into my mind. That, and I started meditating that poem when I was in the on that top of that sea. That I was born with nothing, and if I die with nothing, I could have lost nothing, and probably enjoy the journey. That's just reflecting on my mind. I say, okay, if that is going to be the end, then I thank God. But instead of being the end, it's just the beginning of the, of the journey. What kind of um, songs were you singing? Do you still remember that? And how, like, what were the lyrics about? Was there a meeting? Yeah, I remember fervently because I sang in many diversity, I sang in many denominations, especially in Africa. So I sang in English, I sang in Yoruba because I come from Western Africa in Nigeria. So, and uh, the one that I could, that can reflect very well is take all the glory because all the glory belongs to you. We have a lot of colleagues that they are that they are bound, they are, that they are saying something, they are casting, they are bounding. I just looking at them that this is not a real time for you to cast and bound. I just call upon my creator, which is my head. And that is the title of the event that we were doing today. So that is it. Okay. Um, wir haben ein kurzes Video, einen kurzen Videoclip ähm, von dem Moment, als ihr Land gesehen habt, also in Lampedusa ankam. Vielleicht können wir uns das kurz angucken und dann kannst du uns ähm, erzählen, wie du ähm, sozusagen dich gefühlt hast, als du ankamst. Oh. Um, that was some time before you actually reached um, Lampedusa. 
what did you feel when you saw the land when you actually entered to Europe, which was probably your dream to like arrive? What was your feeling in that moment? Yeah, actually, uh, the dream is no more Italy. We run for our better lives. I don't, I don't think because in Libya, for me, I think living in Libya is even better than for me coming to Italy. But because of the war, when the war started, so everyone, for me, I run for my dear life. So that is why I flee from Libya to Italy. But did you have some expectations how life will be in Europe um, before? And maybe how do you feel now? Did this expectation like actually happen, or is is that like different now from what you expect? Yeah, life always different. The way you want it, you live your life the way you want it. So I believe that there's there is a great opportunity in Europe, even more than Africa. So and walking towards it. Okay. The film you're watching was shot by a gentleman amongst the four of us. And this gentleman is this gentleman that's sitting there. His name is Adikunle Abacha. And um, I, we didn't know each other, actually. We never met before. But this journey brought us all together. And we are the living survivors of this boat trip of 2011. We came during a, a very, very bad period. The 112 Toma Ox cruise missiles, militias left and right hunting black people to kill them. And all roads were blocked. The question is always, why are they coming here? Why are they coming here? We are coming here because of the violence, the wars. Women and children were killed. Women were raped in front of us. We could only help those we could help, give them comfort. When I met him, he was singing. And we, we am, you look at the sea, it's endless. No GPS, it's not a normal boat. And we, I believed, I, I didn't just believe we could make it, but I had hope. It was just hope that we will survive. So we all crossed our minds and we continued. But when he was singing, those of us that understood what he was saying sang with him. And it gave us more courage to sing on and sing on and sing on. Actually, he said seven hours. I think he forgot. I think it was 21 hours. 21 hours. We left Tripoli exactly 11 a.m. in the morning. And we traveled overnight. And you could, you could tell them. <laughs> uh, the boat stopped at the time. There was no petrol, nothing in it. It stopped. And we were in limbo. And he was part of one of the people that told me to call the rescue because I had a Turaya phone on me. So we radioed. I didn't speak Italian. Uh, I just, ah, plonto, plonto, da, 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 molto tragedy, blah, blah, blah. Everybody's dying. Come, come, come. And eventually, they came after about two hours, right? We all criticize Italy. They are this, they are that. But with, without them, we will not be here today. So we must thank them also for being alive. And um, joining up with him gave me the opportunity to interpret what we experience and to share it with the listeners and the audience today. And Abiola also, can you give the microphone to him? also embarked on the same journey, but at different time. We left 11 a.m., they left about, but we all saw each other at the embark, when we were embarking on the boats. And we met later on. Can you tell the story? Yeah, my name is um, Habiola Kotun. I'm from Nigeria, and we get to know each other in Italy. 
after the tragedy experience we, we had in the boat. But to me today, it's like a testimony seeing my brothers being together once again. It was really not a easy journey. You see it in the TV just like that, maybe it's easy, but we know what we felt and how hard it is to cross from Libya to Italy. But it's not our, it's not our happiness that we, we want to live like that. But you can go back and the front that you are going in Italy is very hard. It's do or die, either you survive or you die. So we have no option because when you go back, like you are going back to your country, there's a lot of rebel in the desert which you can even lose your life from, from that journey. So we, there is no hope, you have to go forward. So that is why we, everybody decide on his own to travel like that. And we'll get to know each other when we are in Sicily. And that is when we become like a brother and they come there. And for me, everything that, I, that I'm seeing right now is just like a big testimony that we can just gather together in the land of Germany today and talk to a lot of people like you. We are so glad, we are so happy because this country really accepts us, not fully yet, but we know that in the future, we could have a better, better place to stay in this country. We are so happy. Okay. It's not easy. Aviola actually is one of the few young refugees in Germany, in Deutschland, that is integrating fairly. He's gone to school, he speaks Dutch and German very well, and he's always pushing me, oh, come on, Larry, you have to, come on, you have to speak German, this is a this Dutch land. Eh? So he's a yeah, boxer. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> the most Dutch lady. <laughs> so I try my best. They are doing better. I encourage them to do more. So that is the story of Alejo, the strangers in your midst. We are not dangerous. We don't have bombs. And for those people, of course, we know there are dangerous people amongst us. And we will help in as much as together to come together and fish out those bad eggs amongst us. So we continue to thank the public for their support and encouragement. And thank you for coming to the Alejo piece. That's our story. Thank you very much. We really appreciate everyone. And I think Sunday wants to sing something. And he wants to play drum for you. So how can you do both? Yeah, I think I will do it with the support of my friend. Uh, I, really, I really use this opportunity to say a very big thank you, not only to German, even to Italy, because they done a lot for us. You know, somebody who could fed you for complete one year, don't know where you come from. They, I think they have done great. And uh, we still expect more from them. I say thank you from them. And thank you, a big thank you to the German, to the German citizen, to everyone who have used their strength, you know, to strengthen us too. I say very big thank you on behalf of myself and all my friends. Thank you very much. All I said is my God is 
Vielen Dank. Ähm, setz dich gerne einen Moment hin, dann ähm, haben wir noch ein kurzes Interview mit dir. Ähm, wir haben vor der Show kurz gesprochen und du erzähltest mir, dass du einige Male in Kenia, also in Afrika und in Kenia warst, ähm, vor allem. Ähm, wann war das erste Mal, warum bist du da hingefahren? Das hatte mit Musik zu tun. Ähm, was hast du da gemacht? Um, it started in 2008. So there's a choreographer from, from, from Hamburg. Her name is Angela Guerrero. And she did a dance piece, a contemporary dance piece, together with dancers from uh, Ethiopia and from Kenya. So he asked me to create the music for this piece and uh, the rehearsals took place in Addis Ababa and in Nairobi. So therefore I traveled to Addis and to Nairobi to, to work on the music for this piece. Um, und dein nächstes Projekt um, wird wieder in Kenia stattfinden. Im November wirst du noch mal hinfahren. Um, und das hat diesmal mit Politik zu tun. Um, und vor allem geht es da um das um, Freihandelsabkommen, was geplant ist zwischen Europa und vielen um, Entwicklungsländern, vor allem Ländern um, in Afrika, subsahara Afrika. Um, was genau, wie kann man sich das vorstellen? Wie kann man Politik vereinen, um, in diesem Fall jetzt mit uh, Musik? Um, so Two years I've, I've been to, to Kenya again and uh, I read an article in a newspaper about this free trading agreement called EPA. And in Germany everybody's talking about TTIP, of course, and, and about CETA. So it's very difficult to find more information about this free trading agreement. And on the other hand, it very often happened to me that I was asked to, to talk in radio stations after record release and to talk about the process and about the background of the record. And they always told me not to talk too long because uh, people seem to skip to the next radio program if you talk too long. That's what they always told me. So, it, and then I thought maybe it's possible to, to um, do a lot of interviews on this issue, on this topic, and then to turn the, those interviews into music. So the idea is now to, to travel to, to Kenya again in November and to meet with a lot of people from different NGOs and from this politicians and uh, journalists and then to record those interviews and then finally turn it into a new record so that people are able to, to listen to music but on the other hand they are getting all this information that they usually would, would uh, get through a documentary. And the, the topic is um, that the European Union and the East African community is negotiating this free trading agreement since 2008. And a lot of people say that there are a lot of disadvantages for a country like Kenya. And therefore the president of Kenya, Kenyatta, he refused to sign the contract. And then last year, as an answer, the European Union imposed the tariffs of um, Kenyan cut flowers and coffee and tea and uh, therefore a lot of small and medium-sized companies had to, had, to, had to shut down. So they were um, uh, going, uh, going bust. And, and uh, therefore Kenyatta finally signed the contract. So that's, that's the situation. And three weeks ago the, the contract was um, ratified in, in the Kenyan parliament. And there are a lot of concerns about this um, development that a lot of people are saying that this agreement will increase poverty in Kenya, but um, but um, as far as I know, it's already ratified. So that situation. Okay, vielen Dank uh, für den Einblick. Vielen Dank, dass du gekommen bist und das klingt nach einem guten Projekt. Dankeschön. Thank you very much, Sven. And um, we have. Performing next, Cool Crazy, a multi-talented X-Factor participant all the way from Italy, world famous Cool Crazy. I had the face for the song. Cool Crazy! Ta ta ta